Perhaps the most interesting area in uh, French aviation is the time after the World War, uh, in the ni early 1950s, when France was starting to experiment with prototypes to learn how to fly with uh, jet power. This is the uh, Rolls-Royce Nene, which was licensed and produced by Hispano Suiza here in France. And this is the first aircraft that flew there. Another very interesting aircraft of the time, actually after the war, directly after the war, was the Leduc 004, which was carried on top of another aircraft, the so, uh, transporter called Languedoc. And the Leduc uh, was actually a Ramyat aircraft with a guy sitting in the inlet. And you will see that this is also uh, the case for the next uh, trial of the high speed aircraft tracking the sound barrier. This is the next iteration of a Ramyat aircraft, the so called Leduc 22. And once again, the guy is sitting in the inlet. I'm going to show you, first of all, the cockpit area, which is part of the multi shock inlet cone. And this is where the guy is sitting. And actually, below we have a replica of the plexiglass structure that he was sitting in, and he had this periscope. Uh, area to look into to actually see better than through this very angled uh, periscope with these uh, plexiglass windows. This is the experimental aircraft driven by a very small jet engine from Turbomeca uh, which was used to learn to fly with tailless deltas after the technology has been acquired in Germany from uh, the Messerschmitt company. And uh, this is actually the forerunner of the Mirage, classical deltas, and uh, Saab, who made a double delta, the Draken, which I actually piloted myself, had a similar aircraft, was called the Small Draken, which also was the same size to try out the low speed characteristics of this uh, platform. One of the most exciting prototypes I find is actually this Nord Griffin, which uh, first of all had a, a, a an intake below the cockpit, like the F-16, uh, and then a canard, like the Wigan. So this was actually a forerunner, both of the Wigan and the and it's a canard delta uh, normal platform, and it was the forerunner both of the Wigan and I would say the F-16 generation in terms of architecture. Uh, it had a very unique propulsion system. It has a Natar uh, normal jet engine. Uh, derived from the, uh, the Siemens uh, and BMW uh, jet from, from Germany, from Berlin. And then it actually had a ram jet as well. That's why they had such a big uh, fuselage uh, aft of the inlet. This is the tail of the Nord uh, Griffin. And you can see the huge exhaust there for the ram jet engine. It actually took this aircraft up to Mach 2.7 in 1957. So it was quite a hot rod. The end result of all these trials with different platforms and architectures ended up in the Mirage 3, the well-known Mirage 3, which had a good supersonic design with the del uh, Delta platform and also good inlets to drive uh, this aircraft up to Mach 2 uh, with rather modest uh, power from the Atar engine uh, in afterburning mode. This is the one prototype for the vertical takeoff Mirage, small delta wing, and a number of lift engines in the fuselage. This is uh, showing the prototype of the Mirage swing wing project, which was in the early 70s. And at the end of the day, they decided to fix the wing at a certain angle and made the Mirage F1 project <coughs> out of this, uh, these experimental prototypes. The aircraft generation just before the Mirage 3 was this Mystere 4. And uh, you can see it's a high subsonic aircraft. And if you look at the tail, you can see that the horizontal tail is sitting at the same position as the uh, Dassault uh, business jets. And Dassault has kept this architecture of the horizontal and vertical tail surfaces since the early 50s and all the way into the business jets. And the, the Falcon business jets from the SOA are, are renowned 
for the flying qualities, so there must be some point in having this tail configuration. This is the Cadron 635 from the mid-30s, uh, before the Second World War, and for being a, an aircraft, a business aircraft from before the Second World War, it has a very nice uh, shape. It's a single level wing, which is uh, all metal stress skin construction, uh, so it was ahead of its time. Um, we are now inside one of the halls. And it's a conference hall, but the nice thing about the conference ambience is that it's actually happening under the wings of two of the world's concords. So this is the first concord. And if I turn over to the other side, and go a bit, you see a lot of people there. There you see at the end, you see the other concord. So you actually have the conference area cool and nice under the wings of the concord. Another aircraft is, which is inside this hall with the two concords is the Mirage uh, 4, I think it is, uh, which is the nuclear bomber, uh, Mach 2 capable nuclear bomber, which was uh, carrying one bomb at the center fuselage and the rest was fuel tanks. And at the end, it was actually flying at pre top level uh, to uh, undergo to avoid the radar detection. You can see the installation of the nuclear bomb underneath the valley, half recessed, and the Jato rockets on both sides to help it to take off with the full fuel load. It also got a refuel boom uh, so it can be refueled in the air. 